Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Samiksha Das. I am medical forensic psychology from uh, School of Forensic Psychology, National Forensic Sciences University, and uh, I am here to talk about understanding the authenticity of eyewitness recall uh, using neurosignature profiling. Eyewitness over the centuries have been a very crucial member in assisting the system of justice delivery, and in a courtroom, statement given by them is highly uh, uh, credible. However, eyewitness uh, errors can lead to wrongful convictions, and as correctly pointed out by APA in 2014, one among every three make an erroneous identification. As we know, working memory has three phases, that is acquisition, retention, and retrieval, and in every phase, there are some factors that affect its smooth functioning. And it's a myth that uh, memory retrieval acts like a replaying of a video because memory is uh, under uh, reconstruction at every point in time. And when we are exposed to wrong, uh, you know, misleading information or any kind of information post the event by police or prosecutors or media, eyewitnesses, significant others, that not only alters our memory of the crime, but also the face of the perpetrator. Uh, there are different factors that affect the accuracy, which can be clubbed in two variables, that is estimator variables and si uh, system variables. Estimator variables, we are not having control over it, and it has happens in the acquisition stage and in the system variable we have control over it like uh, it includes wording of the questions uh, who is asking the questions types of the questions uh, like yes or no or misleading information and that brings me to the first variable of my study that is leading questions which has been explained under the section 141 uh, of indian evidence act and Puranik and its uh, uh, you know, colleagues in 2009 have correctly pointed it out that exposure to leading questions is inevitable in this uh, particular age where uh, delayed trial is a very common phenomena and uh, increasing crime where negligible physical evidences are there. They are, uh, it makes it very difficult for the investigative agencies to nap down to the uh, person or their, to uh, ensure that they have the involvement. Uh, so they're increasingly uh, depending on the oral evidences uh, by the eyewitnesses. And this is increasingly uh, emphasizing on the newer uh, scientific forensic tools. BIOS profiling uh, has uh, established itself to be the most uh, humanitarian and non-invasive uh, forensic uh, uh, technique and the underlining principle is that uh, when we are exposed to a, a event um, a direct participation is there those informations are registered in our mind in uh, primary encoding and it is very deep seated in nature but in those information which we overhear that is registered as a form of conce conceptual knowledge so uh, when at the later stage we are trying to prompt these information which is primarily encoded through different cues the uh, uh, signals are very different than the secondary encoding materials. Uh, these are the um, uh, review of literatures which has proved that BIOS profiling has been effective in differentiating between eyewitness uh, victim uh, and a perpetrator and different studies has, have also been done. However, there remains a research gap in understanding whether uh, misleading post-event informations will affect the reading of the EK that has been elicited from the original event. Uh, the aim of the study uh, was to understand the effect of leading questions on the number of EK uh, generated from the BIOS profiling and to understand the effect of leading questions along with negative feedback on the number of uh, EK. Uh, the research hypothesis that was said was uh, there would be no significant difference between the number of EK uh, of pre-test and post-test uh, among uh, both the groups, experimental group one and uh, experimental group two. And uh, experimental method between group design was taken into consideration, 60 participants within the age group of 21 to 31 were taken from different colleges of uh, colleges and universities of Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. Um, PGI was done to check the level of memory. A Gudgeson suggestibility scale was used to find the authenticity of eyewitness recall. And here I've taken into consideration the GSS2. Uh, BIOS profiling measures the EK, that is experiential knowledge uh, of an event. And um, my procedure had two phases. Phase one consisted of seven steps uh, where briefing was done, informed consent in the written format was taken, in, taken from the subjects. Uh, the PGIMS was administered and only people uh, getting the score uh, for average and excellent level of memory were a part of my study. And they were provided with a time date venue of a uh, stimulus event. 
Now the stimulus event was based on the script that was given on in GSS two, and it was a real life skit where uh, which consists uh, which uh, went on for thirteen minutes, and there were three actors who uh, had a um, extreme uh, rehearsal for uh, about uh, one month, and uh, it was approved by different faculties of my university. Few details like name and places were changed according to the Indian setting. um right after uh, right before the stimulus event the reminders and instructions were given all to all the subjects and uh, this real life simulation had a filler activity along with the eyewitness event immediately after the eyewitness event uh, the immediate free recall was taken from every subject and uh, the bios probes were developed on the basis of stimulus event and uh, bios session 1 the administration of bios was done um, exactly after 24 hours of the exposure to stimulus event and uh, a standard um, set of probes was uniform for all the subjects uh, right after the uh, bios administration uh, these subjects were uh, randomly divided into three groups that is experimental group 1 where they were exposed to leading questions experimental group 2 where they were uh, exposed to leading questions along with negative feedback and control group where no treatment was given the phase 2 consists consisted of 15 days gap where uh, these subjects were given three times exposure of the treatment and uh, after the uh, 15 days they were called in the same sequence as bios 1 and the delayed recall was taken uh, bios 2 also had the same standard set of probes and debriefing was done uh, the total number of encoding plus plus data and ek were generated and collected for each participant these data were entered into spss and one way anova was done to find out uh, the difference between three groups in pre test and post test conditions and a paired sample t test was done to find the effect of a different treatment in individual groups um one way anova uh, uh, was done to uh, like uh, uh, the results of one way anova was there was no significant difference that was obtained across the three groups in both pre test and post test and this shows that even after repeated exposure to uh, misleading informations the ek that was generated in the pre test was did not vary in the post test as well uh, the paired sample t test uh, was done for each group uh, so in experimental group 1 there was no significant difference and uh, same for experimental group 2 and 3 as well but i would like to mention it here that even if uh, i was giving a clear instructions to answer uh, the questions based on whatever they saw in the uh, skit um, subjects Uh, did give erroneous uh, answers but and also uh, right after the negative feedback they were very quick to change their responses but this pattern was not shown in the uh, bios reports uh, so hence the uh, results obtained um, it supports my hypothesis set and it proves that bios profiling can be used to check the authenticity of eyewitness statements and uh, the future implications are uh, this result of the study can be used in different uh, forensic conditions like police interrogations uh, sorry police interrogations uh, questioning during trials testimony provided by eyewitness it can also be used to find a way for extracting the original details and it promotes the applications of bios profiling uh, in proving the authenticity of the statements provided by an eyewitness uh, these are my references and uh, thank you i'm up for questions